In order for us to really engage with the present us, the present state, it is important to reflect and it is important to look at our journey and, and, and a lot of the elements that can exist in the journey. One of the things that I'm a very true believer in is being present in the now and not having regrets. I always have this one, one that I often play with about now, again, back to the construct of time, but now probably going back about 10 or more years ago, I was looking at buying a property. And now it would have been worth a lot. It would have been a great investment, but I had lost the property. And I keep revisiting in my mind going, damn, I wish that could have happened. I wish that didn't, or that didn't happen that way, or I wish I could have made that work. And the way I get out of those moments of the, I wish I could have, I wish it would have been different. I, is sometimes picking a time in the, in the immediate present. So something that has just passed to say, if that thing that I regret maybe 10 years ago, that wrong that was done to me or I had done to another, uh, if that had have happened differently and had maybe happened in a positive way, I would not be in a particular place at the particular time further down my journey. Um, and I think why I reference that so often is because Bridge had been moving around and we had grown and then we had shrank a little and then we were re-engaging and growing a little. Uh, and then there was a period in 2019, I was felt that we were I was really back on track. Uh, and I was speaking at a conference in Tampa and one in Canada at the time. And it was November, or sorry, it was, it was October 2019. And so I went home to visit my mom. I mean, one of the most precious ladies in my life and probably my best mentor and my biggest fan ever. Uh, well, while I was there, I could tell she had, wasn't well. And I knew she hadn't been well for a while. And being an expat, you always worry about that horrible moment when you're going to get that call. You're going to get that call that says, you've got to rush home. Uh, and I just truly believe that the universe sometimes protects us and puts us in the place we need to be. Therefore, no regrets. Because the universe put me right there at that one time. And again, going back to the regrets I might have had in the past, if any of those had been different, that moment in time wouldn't have existed. Uh, and I could tell she wasn't well. And before I came back to Canada, I took her to the hospital to see, um, just to make sure. And in that evening, in a, uh, it's, it's almost cinematic in my, in my memory, because it was about midnight in the emergency. In my memory of it, empty, sterile emergency uh, department with almost an eerie silence. And uh, she had some tests done and, the, and then the doctor came to me. And, I, and I've replayed this bit several times over again because it was that one moment that he gave me this news. And the news was, I, if I'm gonna paraphrase, but. I just have to be straight with you. You know, your mom has stage four cancer. And in that one moment, everything just kind of stood still. And, and he could have sugarcoated it. He could have talked around the houses. And at the moment, the shock was like pulling a Band-Aid off. However, I commend him for his honesty and, the, and, his, and, his, and his approach to the situation, because there's no way you can ever say something like that that's ever going to uh, change the outcome. Uh, and at that time, she was very ill. She had her tumor was probably 13 millimeters. Uh, they gave her no more than six weeks to live. Uh, and so at that one moment in time, you, you, it's like people say, what was that like? You know, how did you make a decision? There was no decision to be made. I mean, I, my decision is made not to leave her side. I'm a boy. <laughs> and and I, and I try to put this in a context where I don't get teary-eyed, but obviously in speaking about it, you'll always have a, an emotive state that you try to veer away from. And for me, it was at that one moment that the decision's made, you know? So I simply put a stop gap on bridge, any of the, any client work I was having. And I was working with some really great clients at the time. And I have to say across the board, it was the same answer, family comes first. And I think a layer above that because I knew my clients very well. I think I, I, I am probably the biggest self-professed mama's boy in the world, but I don't think I've ever spoken on any stage or with any client that she didn't appear somewhere in my narrative as my inspiration. Uh, and everything just went on hold. And I worked very closely with the doctors and stuff that I could, because she was very, she went from zero or from probably 80 down to zero. And I worked very closely because that buster was in, doggy daycare. Uh, a friend of mine managed to take him out, but because I was only there on business at the time, you know, I hadn't even prepped for any of this. So within one day, I flew back to London, 
I got Buster and we flew back the very next day. So we did all the vet checks and everything in one, one fair swoop. And, and then I just never left. You know, I, I stayed there. Mom started chemo and in those six weeks that you, you, your, your perspective on time begins to change. It almost becomes a daily, hourly thing in the early part. And in that moment, you know, I, I saw the most amazing woman with the most amazing resilience. And that leads, leads me on to the higher purpose because higher purpose is this, gives us strength that you'll never know. And I was very fortunate that we had 18 months together. From her being as ill as she was, she kind of, they questioned whether she would even survive a shot of chemo. Uh, she flew through it. Uh, her tumor shrank. Uh, the doctors and people used to call her the bounce back queen because she would get right to this edge where everybody thought that she wasn't ready. And I, I remember one one episode of that. She, she, you know, that we all, the doctors was preparing me to, you know, for whether we hospice and it probably would be within days. And I, and I remember going to bed that night and thinking, I've got to start prepping the inner me for this kind of next stage. And I got downstairs and there she was sitting up in bed. Where's my coffee? I want to go to Walmart today because there's stuff I want to get. <laughs> and, and so I, I say that now with humor because you know the end comes for all of us. That's, that's something we just is inevitable we have to live with. However, when people say to me now, you know, I'm very sorry to hear your mom's past, my, my answer is always the same. No, I, I was given the best gift in the world to be in the right place at the right time, to be the son she raised me to be, and to champion my best friend. You know, so from when you're given six weeks and you have 18 months to share, there's no regrets. There's no regrets when the end of a journey like that comes. She, cho she showed me resilience. She showed me humor. She reintroduced my love of ice cream. <laughs> uh, we would do our little drives to ice cream shops just because that's the that's as much energy she had that day. But anybody who knew her just thought, wow, she is probably one of the most uncomplicated, kind people that they've had the pleasure of being in the presence of. And I tell that story and I tell it regularly simply because that 18 months of my journey, I, I think, I changed, I transformed.